our business solutions with the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, a part of what my role is, is really getting to understand businesses here in the Central Ohio on what their talent needs are. And a part of the board's mission is to be able to connect a highly skilled workforce to those businesses. Um, Julie, did you want me to go into a little bit more of the slides now or are we going to wait later just so I can under? I know. Uh, sure. Yeah, you could go ahead and uh, share those slides right now. That'd be fantastic. OK. So um, again, the Workforce Development Board of Central Ohio, we serve as the um, fiscal agent over the Ohio Means Job Center, which you may or may not be familiar with. The Ohio Means Job Center is physically located on 1111 East Broad Street, and that's where we do a lot of our um, work around working with job seekers, people who are interested in getting retrained and connected to employment. Um, right now, you know, due to COVID-19, everything is pretty much virtual. virtual. And I just wanted to highlight a few things that I think it's important in particular for this audience to um, recognize because out of our job center, uh, we have a lot of activities where students and individuals like yourself can really practice networking and getting and learning how to be a, a better job seeker, how to really engage to employment. So some of the things that you see listed on this slide are our virtual events that we're bringing back um, via Facebook Live as well as um, Zoom meetings. So one is employer highlight and that's highlighting employers that are being hosted in our virtual job fair, which I'll um, speak a little bit more about shortly, as well as um, really Thursdays. We, we affectionately call it Thursdays because that's a way that in a small, um, really a small class or a small event for one employer where an individual can practice those interview skills and learn more about individual companies. So it's a more intimate affair for an employer where they're able to really engage with job seekers um, and the employer highlights is um, just a way <clears throat> that you can really do networking. So find out a virtual networking, which I'll talk a little bit more about too. <clears throat> I mentioned our virtual hiring event, and this is something in response to COVID-19 we had to quickly pivot to. Um, a part of what the Workforce Board does is really help reemploy individuals who are experiencing layoff. And as you all know that a lot of you, maybe even some of you, may have been infected by a layoff at this time. So what we do for businesses is come up with um, events that help serve uh, transition those employees to different opportunities. And this virtual hiring event, started off for that purpose, but now with COVID and there's been so many dislocations, we, we really expanded it to every week. So we've hosted already over 40 employers um, on this site with across sectors um, for a different, a lot of different jobs, customer service, a lot of professional jobs. And these are jobs that were available pre-COVID and are still existing. So it's important to note that even though we've seen a lot of closures, there are a lot of businesses that are thriving, which I'm sure some of the other presenters are really going deeper about. But uh, I think you would want to know that our virtual hiring events have changed now. They're happening every other week. So um, this week we didn't have one. Next week we will. But that following week um, on June the 18th, this week will be tailored specifically for recent high school graduates, people who are in career transition, really to explore other opportunities. You could be a college student that is taking a break right now during the summer and you're looking for temporary or seasonal work. So this job fair that will be hosted on June the 18th virtually will be specific to individuals who are seeking those type of opportunities. And again, they span industries, so you'll see a lot of different opportunities um, with that. We also want to uh, make sure that you know that our platform hosts not only employers, but resources, resources that you'll be able to um, go into to find out more about training opportunities. Because a part of things that we do in our job center is all is offer scholarships to individuals. So um, a lot of folks are qualifying for that now because of dislocated worker status. So if you've been uh, have experienced a layoff, you want to um, probably take advantage of some of the training grants that we have available uh, within the job center. And um, I have links to our website where you can do virtual applications for all of that also. 
Another important thing that I wanted to make sure you guys knew about was the Franklin County Skills Boost. This is, uh, you can receive $250 for completing a financial literacy um, series of training. Um, it's, it's, it's a short term training, so it does not, it's not something that you're going to have to do. It takes a year or three, even three months to complete. It's at your own pace and it's something that you can really complete in a week. And after you've completed that, you will receive $250 if you're someone who's been impacted by um, this location. And again, <clears throat> I want to highlight this website. So you want to make sure you visit our omjcfc.org where you can apply for this and get engaged with some of these resources. Um, I've shared this PowerPoint with um, the team, the career services team at Columbus State, and hopefully you can get access to this. But I wanted to also give a few resources. I um, mean, these links go directly to some of the um, programs that I've highlighted, but also with tips on how you can continue to network virtually and really gain skills during difficult times like this. All this right. Is Great information, Opal. Thank you so much for sharing because I know in our poll here at the very beginning that we have uh, our students have pretty much said that they're somewhat concerned about uh, the uh, current COVID-19 and hire and hiring and jobs right now. And these are some fantastic resources that you brought to the forefront. So thank you so much. You're certainly um, welcome. Yeah, so with that, I want to introduce Matt. Uh, Matt, uh, please, will you share a little bit about yourself and your organization? Yeah, great. Hey, how you doing, Julie? Thanks so much. Great to be here today. Uh, my name is Matt Backwitz. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Business Development for Dawson. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Dawson, we are a workforce solutions company that provides uh, job placements, HR management solutions and community workforce programs to many companies, over 300 plus in the Central Ohio region. Um, but the key thing to that, just to be, we're a staffing and recruiting agency here in town, been in business for 74 years and have embraced the growth that we've experienced here in our region. Uh, we look at it to where our job is to educate yourselves as to the great companies that are out there and the great careers that can be had. So, um, you know, another key thing I want to bring up is part of that is our community workforce uh, program in which we work with the students yourselves in which we want to provide you a job opportunity and by doing that also help offset your tuition. So with that, we divide, we designed a tuition reimbursement plan, which would uh, minimal requirements, literally six credit hours be taken per semester, 2.0 GPA. Uh, you work for us for a semester, not only are you receiving income from the job you're working at, getting experience, potentially finding the place you want to land, we'll also provide you $500 tax free to help offset your tuition costs. So look forward to really talking to all of you, educating you on, on what's going on out there and giving a little hope and through this through this crisis. We will get through it. And uh, thanks, Julie. Hey, Julie, I think you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much, Matt, for being here. I, I know that some of our presenters went ahead and submitted additional links. And so with the link that I sent to all of you to join this event today, you received an additional handout with real time links and resources. Uh, in addition to uh, Dawson's Kickstart uh, flyer. So um, just wanted to call that out as well. Um, great, next we have David. And so David, I was wondering uh, if you could share a little bit about yourself and your company here today. Sure, yeah, my name is uh, David White and I am the regional talent manager for One Columbus. Um, One Columbus used to be Columbus 2020 up until last year, but it is now 2020, so we had to change the name. Um, so we are the regional economic development organization for the 11 county Columbus region. And um, what that means is our team um, sits at the regional level. So we um, we represent Jobs Ohio, who is the state level economic development, but also represent 39 local municipalities um, in their economic development efforts. And so we help um, attract companies, but also help companies that are growing or expanding, adding jobs or um, growing their facilities. 
um, with incentives, with connections, um, with resources to help them um, navigate through that. Uh, my role specifically is um, is really threefold. Um, the heavy the heavy majority of what I do is working on the balance of supply and demand of workforce for businesses. And so, um, from the supplies or from the demand side, working with new or expanding companies um, to help them come up with um, with workforce strategies to find the 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 talent that they need. Uh, but then also just existing companies, they they might not be getting incentives, but they just might be here and struggling with workforce or just need some ideas. Um, so our team meets with um, with probably three to four hundred different companies a year. Um, and a lot of those conversations are workforce. And so I will go in and kind of consult with them um, and help make connections to partner organizations, which is the third piece of what I do is maintain relationships with uh, many workforce partners. That's the, the supply side of the workforce equation. And um, so we work with um, public um, workforce um, agencies. So the Workforce Development Board in Ohio Means Jobs with Opal, um, private staffing firms um, like Dawson and Source, nonprofit organizations like Jewish Family Services and Godman Guild um, that have workforce programs and also um, career services and community colleges, career technical schools, and even um, getting into um, the K-12 um, education side. So that's what we do, um, but really at the end of the day, we're working with businesses to help create jobs um, in the region. And I, I think the best, um, you know, the best way to get out of this crisis that we're in is to create jobs. And that's what our team is is 100% um, focused on. Wonderful. And I know our students are really excited to, to hear more uh, in regards to that. Uh, let me go ahead and also introduce Brad. Uh, Brad is here from Minnesota. So Brad, if you will go ahead and uh, share a little bit about yourself and then also about your company, that'd be great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. I really appreciate uh, being asked to, to join in. We're all very lucky, I say, just the panelists alone here uh, from around Columbus. So we got we got we really have some great organizations, profit, for profit, nonprofit that we you know, it's it's a great organization. It's a great way to work with Columbus State. Um, like like Julie said, I'm with InnoSource. We provide contract staffing and business services for companies in Ohio. We actually have some clients outside of Ohio as well. But our headquarters is here in Columbus and, and, and really the heart of our, our, our organization here is in Columbus. Um, we our, our staffing uh, side of the business, we, we really work on trying to find the fit. Uh, the goal with our company is to find long-term homes for our associates. And I'm going to show a quick little video, and it just kind of goes through a bit of our philosophy that I think is important to share. Um, but it, really, the point is that you know we're working with a lot of the top organizations here in, in Ohio, um, of course, with Columbus State and other institutions, educational institutions, uh, to find uh, good employees for the uh, jobs we have available. Um, and, and like I said, finding the right fit and making sure uh, people are happy with what they do, um, that leads to a great long-term career advancement opportunities. And that's really at the heart of our, our mission here. I'm going to hit share and try to show this quick video, and then I, I promise I'll, I'll move it on. But I just think this is a neat philosophy here. Hold on. For your video, Brad, if it has sound, make sure you check that little box when you go to share. Can I help you out with sharing the video? Yeah, I, I apologize. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. I thought you guys were with me there. I apologize. That's all right. That's okay. So if you click the um, button with the arrow and the yep. box, yep. and then um, there's going to be a little box to the far left that you check for sound, and then just click on uh, the video. Tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and, and keep it moving here because I, I blew it there. I apologize. Oh, you're fine. You know, th this is the, the world we're living in right now. We're all learning together. So well, all available at InnoSource.com. Thank you very much, Julie.
<laughs> sure, thank you for being here today, Brad. And last we have um, Jeremy Banta, um, one of our very young Columbus State faculty, uh, the program coordinator for supply chain management. So Jeremy, uh, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? <clears throat> thank you, Julia. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll skip the section about who I work for. I think we're all very familiar with Columbus State. Um, I am an assistant professor of supply chain management. I retired from the Army uh, here about three years ago, started at Columbus State about four years ago. Uh, I'm a graduate of Ohio State. I have a degree in logistics uh, and I have 30 years industry experience. Um, because I'm a teacher, a real quick lesson, you hear supply chain in the news a lot right now. Um, that is normally not the case. Uh, most people know the term but aren't really familiar with what it is. Um, in a nutshell, supply chain management is the process of getting goods to consumers, starting with the procurement of raw materials all the way to the end user. Um, you'll hear me use the term logistics as well. Uh, logistics is just the physical movement of goods within the supply chain. Um, so now that we are all on the same footing, um, I'll go on with what I do. Um, I am a member of the uh, Columbus Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Uh, I'm also on their internal workforce, logistics and diversity committees. I'm also a member of the board of directors for Warehouse Education and Research Council, which is a national level logistics organization. And I'm co-founder of the Ohio Supply Chain Academic Network. Uh, it's a newer organization that's main goals revolve around educating people uh, about careers in supply chain and logistics, specifically geared towards K through 12. And I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. Uh, thank you again to all the panelists for being here today. So I know that we have a second poll question. We we're going to go ahead and roll out in the chat. Again, students, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to go ahead and uh, type them in the box. Also type in your name for attendance here today. Uh, but we're wondering, you know, how many of you will be searching for a job or internship here in the next uh, six months? So go ahead and, and take go ahead and click on that um, and with that being said we'll go ahead and get to our first question uh, i know that we we wanted to go ahead and put this together so we could describe and kind of talk about the outlook and landscape of hiring in the columbus region currently right now and david i know you have uh, quite a bit of background uh, in hr um, and you know, with Col one Columbus, uh, I was wondering if you might be able to share a little bit about what you're seeing about the outlook and landscape of hiring currently. Yeah, sure thing. And and one one thing I should mention um, is the the types of companies we work with. We don't work with all companies. We um, work with companies that are considered economic base. And so um, the easiest way to think about that is um, is companies that are bringing new money to the region. So. An example would be we would work with the Wendy's headquarters in Dublin, but we wouldn't work with the Wendy's fast food restaurant down the street. Um, so, um, so a lot of the businesses that we're working with directly um, have a slightly different impact than I think the whole market, um, which Opal, um, Opal, and and Source and Dawson can talk a little bit more in depth about. And, and please chime in. Um, but obviously, I, I think everybody knows that um, consumer behavior changed pretty rapidly within a, a couple of days, right? Everybody's stuck at home, and so. Um, food service um, went out the door um, to an extent. Um, a lot of um, supply chain um, went up and ticked up. E-commerce um, had an explosion. So you see Amazon um, going up, but then a lot of companies um, that we work with um, went on hiring freezes just because of the uncertainty. And that's that's a lot of what we're hearing still from businesses is there there is just a lot of uncertainty um, in the market. But in looking at job postings, um, in one in one example, um, two weeks ago, we we did a year over year comparison of um, job postings, and even though the amount of jobs that are being posted is about half, that's still four thousand jobs that are being posted. So there there are opportunities out there. There are jobs, and you'll see that with um, Opal and the virtual hiring events. You have over forty companies that are hiring, and a lot of those are high paying jobs. Um, there there are opportunities out there, whether that be um, customer service, it could be um, in even warehouses. You can make living wages. Um, and some of the warehouses that we have in the region. Um, but um, with that said, the in-demand jobs are still there um, and, and those skills are still there. And um, one resource that I shared with Julie that I think was sent out is the um, Office of Workforce Transformations in-demand jobs list. And I think Opal, you had that on your slide as well. Um, and that's just, uh, the website is topjobs.ohio.gov. 
and it's an amazing resource because it shows you the um, the jobs that are in demand, what those salaries are, and even the career paths um, that you need to take to get to those. But um, those those jobs would be technical. Um, so think um, software development, data analytics, cybersecurity, which I know Columbus State has some amazing programs that are being developed and have been developed um, in, in really great pathways with certificates and two-year programs, um, and even uh, the four-year program going to Franklin or other, or other partner schools. But um, skilled trades are, are a huge need. A lot of the companies that we're bringing into the region that are building um, new facilities, they need construction workers, and you can make great wages doing that, and that's a great um, career path. Um, there is advanced manufacturing that always has um, needs, and, and I think one key takeaway out of this is a lot of companies are going to turn to automation um, if they haven't already or start really thinking about that. And those automation jobs, those are, you know, those are professional level jobs that require a lot of um, advanced skills and um, those are going to be booming and there's a lot of conversations about manufacturers reshoring. Um, so I, I would definitely consider um, advanced manufacturing, which again, Columbus State, the modern manufacturing work study, I can't say enough great things about that program. Um, but, um, you know, Columbus State is a great partner um, and there's a ton of programs. Um, so reach out to Career Services and, and if you are thinking about wanting to do something, those are the folks that know, they, they talk to our organization all the time um, about who are the companies that we're talking to and what those needs are and your Career Services. Um, they, they know what's coming up and they know what those in-demand jobs are. So um, even within the in-demand industries, look at those and, and even at a, a data center, you don't have to be an IT worker. You could be construction, you could be facilities maintenance, you could be um, you could be security at a, at a construction site or at a data center. So um, just because we have these companies coming in, you don't think you have a skill set match, um, think outside the box because companies have all kinds of different roles available. Yeah, David, thank you so much uh, for all that uh, you know, feedback and information about all the different uh, areas that where students can find jobs and a shout out in regards to career services and our programs because we really do work hard uh, with our departments to help students get that real experience but I know that you mentioned Opal and and Matt uh, in in regards to also your awareness of some of the things that you're seeing uh, with hiring trends here in Columbus so I didn't know if it, either one of you want would want to jump in on that Opal, your your mic is muted. <laughs> I did I did that earlier. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. My apologies. So, um, one thing I like to mention, though, like right now with all the restaurants and 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 the retails coming back, they found that they're having a hard time finding employees um, right now. So, some of our mainstream businesses and things like that, as they come back, some employee um, some employees are. are are not coming back. So I think that's one thing I like to mention is definitely that there are a lot of um, those temp jobs or part time jobs that are available um, because um, those businesses are kind of struggling because they had to shut down. So I do want to mention that. But in regard to um, uh, the other occupations that have always been there, I know we mentioned that the warehouse and the distribution. There are a lot of jobs in that area, and I'm so happy that um, that there was an education program for supply chain because a lot of times people don't think they think warehouse distribution center that's just a this type of job but there is a is a whole career path in regard to supply chain that i think a lot of people are unaware about so i encourage you to definitely learn more about that area manufacturers are still in business i mean even though they had been some slowdown in some businesses in regard to the auto industry but advanced manufacturing is also a definite career path that I would encourage you to find out more about um, because it's not your 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 um, what you might think of a dirty shop floor type thing all the time. So I mean, I've, I've been very impressed by some of the um, automation and things like that that have come with advanced manufacturing and those those folks are still hiring. So um, that's what I would really like to mention. Um, we have a huge data resource data centers around here so all of those customer service jobs um, with um, united health group and things like that who are constantly looking for um, people in those contact centers um, so definitely take advantage of um, i put the website that david mentioned in the chat box so that's there for you if you want to click on that um, and also Thanks. encourage you to connect with career services or our our um, the job center to learn more about what might be a best fit for you 
Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, I know the second part of that question was, you know, looking at jobs or essential services that are hiring here uh, during COVID-19. And Matt, um, I know that you said that, uh, you know, with Dawson, I know you have really good working relationships with a lot of different companies. What are you seeing that's happening right now? Uh, yeah, thanks, Julie. We are, uh, and again, I, I guess you, you look at it through these times, there are some companies who are going to uh, actually experience a uptick. And with that said, we are seeing some of those essential companies, some that maybe people didn't focus as much on that now have needs. You know, there's companies out there, I can name some like Medline and and uh, that's out in West Jeff, you know, and obviously we're familiar with, uh, there's another one, Smith's Medical. Smith's Medical is responsible for uh, building ventilators. So you look at these things and here they are, but I guess I would challenge how many people were aware of their presence here, right, during that time. Um, but both Opal and David, and David brought on great points. I mean, if you look at some of these things that are still growing, you look at e-commerce, right, and what an uptick that is. Uh, some of our companies, especially in some of the retail side, that's where they've seen a major increase themselves. Uh, but if, again, if you look at <clears throat> the makeup of the Central Ohio region, and I always give uh, credit where credit's due to 20, Columbus 2020, now one Columbus. Uh, you go back to 2010, and now here we are to 2020. Thank goodness we did some diversification to help us weather this time, whereas we know we were weighted in some heavy areas, and now it allows Columbus, the Central Ohio region, to be able to come out and to provide opportunities. So they're out there. I can tell you right now, currently we have 200 openings. We're having trouble finding people. And so it, it's kind of an interesting dilemma we're going on with right now to where um, there is, there are opportunities that are out there and, and just making people aware of it and open your mind. Again, look at different companies. Again, what Opal said, if you look at some of these uh, you know, warehouse op companies itself, there's so much different things they need in there. They need accountants, they need IT, they need people to get involved in the creative side. So you can't just look at it that it's just materials handlers and forklift drivers. These companies have large demands and uh, they're looking for it. So as yes, this is a interesting, crazy time, but I will still say there are there are glimmers of hope and we will get through it. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you guys are here today and you're also talking about some of the places, websites where students can go to find out about uh, careers uh, and open job openings, you know, with Dawson, with Innosource, with uh, One Columbus. I know you have uh, a site where you're able to click on all the different areas where, where there are openings. Um, Another question that we have here is what advice do you have for students that have just been laid off due to COVID-19? Um, you know, I, Opal, you used to be, uh, I know that you've, you've uh, ha worn a lot of hats in your time, but I know uh, way back when you were a career coach, which I think is, uh, is really uh, interesting. Um, but I was wondering if you have any tips at this time for, you know, students, you know, how they can approach that, um, what advice you might have for someone that's just been laid off. Um, the thing, the main thing is to, to stay engaged. So even if you choose, even if you choose not to immediately go back to work and that's someone's choice, I would strongly suggest you really to think about what training you can get involved in and double down on that training of what's next for you. Because this is a time where there are a lot of resources available to someone who has been dislocated. And I mentioned a bit of them earlier where you can get training at no cost to you. So if you're going to Columbus State and I'm taking X advanced manufacturing training, you can get funding to go to that training at no cost, okay, or less of a cost. So um, I, I would strongly encourage you to spend this time really thinking about and strategizing what you want next for yourself. So, I mean, that I think that's the main thing and stay connected. Don't dull out. So even if you're not necessarily looking to get reconnected to employment right now, I would definitely look at where can I scale up and what's next so you can have a livable wage for yourself or, or the next transition job? I mean, the ch next career you want to go into. So I think those are the main points, just not to stay stagnant, stay adaptable 
and really look out, look at the resources that are available to you. That's great advice, Opal. That, that really is. Um, and we're going to be talking about ways that students can do that with networking here coming up here very shortly. Uh, are, hey, you know, Julie, can I, yes. can I add something onto that that Opal, sure. um, I think she missed because it's too obvious. If, if you have been laid off due to COVID-19, reach out to the Job Center um, with yes. Ohio's job. <laughs> I mean, that is the um, I, there's a lot of other things to do. Uh, staying engaged is definitely really important. Don't lose hope, but go to the job center. They they have so many resources available that most people don't know about. So that's anything from resume writing to interview prep, but they also have employer relationships in place. Um, but they they have career coaches that can help you decide, you know, what is the best career path for me? Um, so that is a incredible resource. Um, and I know Opal will give you 20 ways to reach out to them. Please do it. And um, once you can actually go to the job center, go to the job center, just show up and they they will help you. And not only help you, they they have tons of free resources available to help with training, um, the the cost of training and things like that. Yeah, thank you for that, David. And in the the slides that I sent, it are the links because a lot of those workshops, some of the workshops are virtual in regard to preparing for a job because the job center is closed right now. So if you go by eleven eleven East Broad, you can't get in. But um, thank you for that, David. Yes, uh, those virtual uh, job fairs are are coming up, and you know it's a great way for students to get connected. So yes, thanks, David, so much for sharing that. Um, another question that we're kind of hearing is, um, let me let me go ahead and direct this one to Brad. Um, if students are not hearing back from employers right now, what else can they do to stay active in their current job search? What might be some suggestions or tips you have there? Well, yeah, and it's a great question because, uh, as we said, there are some people that are retracting and they're not, you know, they're, they're in a holding pattern or a straight up hiring freeze. And while there are a lot of great opportunities out there, maybe it's not exactly what that person may want. I guess one of the things I'll start with is show yourself a little grace. Be patient because, listen, this is a crazy time and it's not you. Um, stay positive. And I know that's easier said than done, right? Um, but again, show yourself a little grace and just, you know, try to stay positive. Um, of course, politely getting reaching back to those folks that you've engaged with already. But listen to them. If they're saying, hey, listen, we don't know anything. I'll know something more July 1st. Respect it. Maybe you don't call, but maybe you, you shoot them that email the week before July 1st to, to remind them that, that you are still engaged and you're still looking for work if you are indeed doing so. Um, but then again, the networking, and I know you're going to get into that a little bit, and I think Opal was going to speak a little bit more at that. Um, that's obviously going to be a great way. And, 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 you know, it's half of who you know as well, right? So reach out to your friends, your family, people from church, of course, you know, through Columbus State and the Career Services Department. That's always what I tell people if they're still engaged with Columbus State is go to your career services. They have the relationships. They know who's hiring. Um, so those are some good resources. But again, reach out to people you know because they know where positions are. That I, I work with some folks down in the Rickenbacker area that Jeremy would be very familiar with. It. A lot of people just don't know that those organizations are down there, um, that there are huge, you know, Fortune 100 companies with – boundless and endless uh, opportunities for advancement. They want good people. And, and, and heck, if you drive down Allen Creek, you, you still won't see them. Um, so reach out to those places um, and, and, and you go to the resources on, on, you know, Ohio Means Jobs and Jobs Ohio and Columbus One, or One Columbus rather, um, because they are listed there and there are places you could find job opportunities that are a few miles from home that you, you really didn't even realize were right in your back, backyard. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, great advice there, um, Brad. Uh, we do have a quick poll in our uh, chat uh, right now. Uh, there was a business first went ahead and yeah, everyone guessed it. <laughs> uh, went ahead and uh, put up an article in regards to the employer in Columbus who just did a hiring surge of 11,000 jobs and that was Amazon. So that is that is correct. Our our students are, um, they've got their finger on the pulse right there. But, you know, I think, Brad, you were really talking there about how students can stay active in their job search. And I think it really brings up an important question about how people are doing that differently now. How, how can they think about pivoting their job search strategies? And I don't know if you have any tips 
in regards to that, um, Matt um, or uh, Jeremy, you know, uh, just, you know, how now that we're all virtual, uh, and yeah, we're I, not I meeting face to face as much anymore. What yeah, are I, some things that students can do? I can definitely talk to that a little bit. Um, you know, the internet is a, 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 a wide open, wonderful thing. Um, and there are thousands of job search experts out there. Um, so if, if a certain strategy isn't working for you, do your research. Um, look to see who's popular online and what's working for them. Um, and don't stick to one method. Um, use different methods, use different ways to search. Um, go to company websites to apply for jobs. Don't necessarily go through job boards. Some of those job boards just pull postings off of other sites and repost them. Um, uh, you don't 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 rely on just that one traditional way of looking for work. Um, look for different ones. Uh, go on on discussion boards and see who's having success and see what people are saying. Uh, just keep it flexible, keep it fluid, and definitely use your network. Um, if you don't have one, now might be the time to start building one. Um, once you get a job, don't let it go. Uh, but definitely reach out to your network. Uh, most jobs are. Uh, are, are, are got by people who know people. Um, and uh, so it's, it's definitely important to, to talk to those that are out there and, 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 you know, and see what advice you can get. Yeah, that's, that's great advice, Jeremy, is looking at all the different ways that students can connect in and uh, look at um, job searching skills and looking at uh, how to use those uh, you know, LinkedIn or, or, or looking at uh, the, the employer websites, um, connecting with who you know. Um, I think all those are, are, are great tips right there. Um, one question that we do have, do we have any questions right now currently from students before I move on to another question that I noticed? This is Chelsea. Yes, we do. Um, so one question and um, Opal had responded to this in the chat, but um, someone was asking if Indeed.com was still the best website for jobs and are there any other um, resources you might recommend? Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, floor's open for that one. Yeah, I'll jump in. I mean, I, I think that um, if you're looking for a job, then any any job board site is a resource. Indeed is a great one. And in, in our world, it's one of the big five, but um, it really depends. Um, but I mean, LinkedIn is is one of the probably the biggest ones, especially for professional jobs. Um, but even even non professional companies will be using that. Um, Indeed is a great one. Glassdoor. Um, it, some of those sites basically, like you said earlier, kind of pull from other sites, but those are still great ways to learn about the opportunities and go to the, the company's website, um, look at their their job boards and, and actually see the opportunities because you might come across some that aren't listed that might be a better fit for you. Um, but Monster is another one. Um, it, it really depends on the industry. Some industries more heavily use others, um, but, um, but all of those are, are good resources. Uh, I am seeing another uh, question in the uh, chat from a student. Um, let's see. Uh, what is an ideal uh, GitHub presentation for job applications? Um, and I think somewhat maybe talking a little bit about, I think their question is a little bit more about uh, what are some of the opportunities you're seeing in tech currently right now. Uh, I don't know, Matt, if, if you could speak to any of uh, the, your business sure. relationships with um, yeah. the companies in the tech field. Yeah, I can give a little bit. I know David can add to this as well. Obviously, Columbus, we're seeing with some of the changes, I think with the new businesses that are being attracted to Columbus and the Central Ohio region are definitely in the IT realm. We're also going to see an influx of biohealth as well. Um, the other thing to look at is, you know, the interesting thing that's going on with tech right now is how it's crossing over with other positions in, in other areas. Whereas we used to think of call center type of position, but actually that's going to, those jobs now are demanding more of a tech background. Uh, we're also looking when you look at the creative mindset, right? Where we used to think of with marketing, but guess what? 
that's crossing over with IT and tech as well. We deal with social media, media and uh, digital uh, social, you know, social media, et cetera, all that stuff that's out there. But uh, the big push it is, and I and I keep is reskilling and people taking advantage of going after cyber. I think is it's and we all use it, but it's trite. But guess what? It's it's a big need, and soft you know software developers. And there are so many great programs. I mean, I know with Columbus State, I know with some of the other colleges and institutions as well, and the demand jobs are there. And to the fact where companies are actually starting to look at personalities that fit it, and that will help get them, that will train them and educate them. So I'll use one as cyber. I know of a company here in town, they are looking at 18 year olds, 19 year olds, and they look at them, would you be, in, are they, do they have the mindset of being an investigator? Literally something like that. And they literally put them through a test. If so, they're bringing them in and taking them from step one all the way through to where, you know, over time they grad, they have a degree, they've been employed, and then they have a job and they're building up a talent pool and a workforce for themselves. So lots of opportunity that comes through there, there's going to be more. I think we're going to see as we go through these in the next six months. But I always joke, IT is where it is. So <laughs> no pun intended, but I'm just saying.